It's the best of foul territory. Kratz, Braun, Frazier, and Todd Father. I didn't realize that you gave birth to the polar bear nickname. Yes, I did. I gave him the polar bear nickname. I still haven't seen any coin from it, but <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna see a very good interview. The guy is unbelievable. He's candid, talking about his swing. It's something you kids and you adults will not want to miss. Mm -hmm. Two words: Big Woo this week. Yeah. Story time with Big Woo. Let's get into it. Pete Alonzo leads off. I mistimed my pregame coffee. Mistimed it. I had it. I had it too close to game time. And then I'm running, running, doing my sprints, and then I throw. And then middle of the first inning, I'm like, goodness gracious, I this is not good. So I said, I don't care where this pitch is. This at bat is ending first pitch. And it like because I need to go. And then first pitch, I get a hanging slider, and then I deposit it in the seats. And then oh. as soon as as soon as I as soon as I touch home plate, it was like it's straight to the bathroom. No high fives, straight to the bathroom. But dude, honestly, if I had to run the base, I honestly I would have gotten picked off on purpose or something. First of all, I don't believe in fighting battles in the newspaper. Like if you got a problem, go up to Marcus Stroman and say, hey, let's figure this out. I'll put my name on the quote. But isn't this what we wanted? We wanted more emotion. Now somebody, because they got it shoved up their rear end by Marcus Strom, and they're like, oh, I know it's not about him. Well, guess what? He just shoved it straight up your butt. And with Madison, I would hear things, you know, sometimes about him, you know, being late to one of his bullpen sessions or being the first guy out of the clubhouse after a game, that kind of thing. Just things that, you know, he'd done, I'm sure, for years in San Francisco. And because he was Madison F and Bumgarner, you know, no one was going to call him to the carpet. Um, but when things weren't going well, you know, the Diamondbacks would be like, man, I hope our young pitchers don't get the message that this kind of stuff is, is okay. They did not get the guy that they thought was going to kind of help bring these younger pitchers along and really kind of show them how to get how to get the job done in the big leagues. They hoped they would have that kind of veteran influence. And he, he wasn't really that guy. My man, Adam Abdat, he's actually Marcus Stroman's cousin. who I got to meet when we played in New York. He has this company called BuildDifferentSports.com. He makes awesome uniforms for you know not a youth athletes and youth sports as well and um he's ig is at built different sport check him out he's gonna make all custom jerseys for me well he made me one first and then he's gonna make everybody on the show one so we can all rock him one day but he's like listen everyone does stuff that they they regret but also too uh if the if the dugout in the locker room was mike 24 7 then you would need a you would need all sorts of bleeps <laughs> but bleeps, we don't have bleeps on this show. What does LFGM mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's fucking go, Mets. That's what it means. Let's go. <laughs> so after the game, there was just a real buzz in the stadium. There was a real buzz in downtown. Uh, and I just felt that uh, in that moment, it would have been cool to go out uh, and, you know, go to a bar and buy some drinks for the fans. I felt that, uh, you know, in that moment, it was a great win for the city. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, to be able to do that for the fans, leave on a high note was uh, was really cool. What was the total? How much? Are you going to tell us? How uh, it was $1,000 flat, actually. Well, my big thing off the field is golf, so um, I can't do that either. So having to play a lot of video games while I'm at home, um, you know, at the field, I, I do my stuff and then I just kind of hang out. Um, you know, play some golden tea in the locker room left-handed um, just to keep me, uh, get my golf fix. But um, just hanging out with the guys, that's really the, the best way to kill time and, you know, uh, keep the sanity. As far as the past week or so, I've been feeling great and play catch. I'm gonna play catch again today here in a little bit. And um, just start back with a buildup, man. It's, uh, this is uncharted territory for me. I've never had a arm injury in pro ball, so. I'm trying to navigate that a little bit, and uh, but as of right now, I feel great, and I can't wait to to get back out there and play. And I cannot stand sitting in the dugout watching. I don't think he's stopped smiling since he's been over here. Um, you know, that's just kind of the, that's kind of the way he is. Uh, the the 300th home run was really cool because leading up to it, he'd probably hit in about seven or eight balls, all about 105 or harder that hit the top of the wall. Um, and so, you know, all of us, we kept thinking that, oh, this, this guy's going to save it until he's in Atlanta to hit this 300th home run. But uh, uh, no, he was just waiting for an opportunity to hit a grand slam to make it even more special. Once I finally, you know, really reset, that's what I did. I hit the reset button in all phases of, of the game, uh, mentally, physically, on the field, off the field. And I, I think that's kind of what really allowed me to grow um, as a person, as a player. Why is John Fisher immune from any criticism internally from MLB from what I can see, what I can understand, 
Why has Manfred not been harder on him? Why has he been so accommodating? That's the word I used in the story. Why so accommodating to an owner who has not done well with his team? Who does a dunk in horse? Like that's, guys, wouldn't that be cheating? Like you gotta do trick shots in horse, no? You gotta do something to win. Yeah, I, 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 Dude, I noticed my opponent couldn't jump, so I had to play against my opponent and go for the dunk <laughs> with the three letters. Hey, I, w I was throwing balls up, hitting off my head, popping them yeah. in off the backboard, behind the back. Like I was doing MJ stuff just without the dunks, but I just remember I was eating really good. I think I was eating at Ruth Chris that night after everything was said and done. <laughs> Let's be honest, Acuna is a bit of a drama queen. Anything that comes inside, he hits the deck and is laying around it. He reminds me a lot of Segura, but like Kirby just stared at him. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna throw it in there again because that's my half of the plate. You know, whenever we're watching <laughs> the scouting report on the pitcher, we, we always like to, to notice if he's a guy that points up uh, when the ball goes in the air or not. <laughs> yeah, those are the best. Edwin Diaz does that all the time for the Mets. He always is like, well, I'm, 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 I'm glad you said Edwin. that because that was definitely a guy that we that I could think of off the top of my head that always points up in the air. How's Wade doing? He's awesome. He's he's on the mend. He's 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 throwing he's throwing to the little kids and the trainers are having a having a fit because he's not the. You know, he was a veteran when Todd was there. Yeah. Todd's an all-star. Where's Todd now? <laughs> Crushing it. He's got the he's got the Crushing Todd it. Father foul territory jersey that, that Joey he's... Votto might be wearing next year with us. <laughs> and maybe some Jays for the boys down there. Everybody gets a gets a pair of Jays. Ooh. Pair of Jays. Well if I was listen, I'm an Adidas guy. So <laughs> I'll have to Adidas <laughs> would love that. He's, he's, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to hook him up with some Adidas, not Jays, man. I'm Team Adidas. Uh, <laughs> it's that guy. Give me the play what? by play. Can we get it? Dude, people in Houston still give me shit for that, and I, yeah, I just sit there and take it. Nothing I can do. <laughs> I, I got buckled, man. I got buckled, and it was. Uh, I just wanted to go home after that. That was it. That was done. <laughs> Another dramatic week in baseball. We covered it all. The Stroman conversation was really good. AJ Przinsky, who on TikTok got a lot of love for just being like, let the kid play. And even Pete Alonso said the same thing. So it was great. And I'm glad to hear Todd Father that Pete said at the end of the interview, he's going to come on once a month. And that's his payment for the polar bear nickname. That's it, man. We'll take that every day of the week. This is something that we you young fans out there are gonna love to hear. It was such a great interview. Let's see more of it. Pete Alonzo deposited one in the seats and then one in the seat. <laughs> Touche. Make sure you click that, that full interview. It's up on Foul Territory's YouTube channel. This is all a podcast too that you can get on Apple or Spotify. And we do this every single weekday, one to three Eastern. Thanks for watching the best of Foul Territory.